Hello everyone and welcome back to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today we're going to be creating these abstract particles using Blender 2.8. Now before this video begins I want to tell you guys that I started a Discord recently and you are welcome to join. The link is down in the description. Uh, you can post your art there and uh, give critiques, ask questions and all that. So if you're interested, link is down in the description. Okay, so here we are in Blender 2.8 and they've finally added color to the icons over here. And I also think they rearranged them because the physics panel is right here instead of at the bottom, which is a little confusing, but I'll get used to it. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, you might notice if you're using a newer version of the beta that these ones up here have color, but the one that I'm using currently does not. So the first thing that we're gonna be doing is deleting this cube and then press Shift A and we're gonna be adding in an icosphere. This is going to be the emitter for the particles, and then we'll add another icosphere that will be the particle itself. So press Shift A, we'll go to Mesh, and then Icosphere, right here. I'll press G, actually before you do anything, open up this thing right here and change the subdivisions down to 1. Once you do that, you can press G, X, and move it over to the left or to the right, and then scale it down. We can also move this to a new collection so we don't see it in this first collection. So hit the M key and go new, and we'll just type in particle for the name, and then enter. Now if you wanna switch between these two collections fast, you can hit the one key on the top of your keyboard, and then two to go to this one. It's just how layers worked in Blender 2.7. If you wanna bring both layers in, you can press shift two, and you can see they're both in here now. So I'm just going to go one to hide that one, then I'm going to right click on our icosphere. I might scale it down a little bit, then go over to the particles, which are right here, then hit the plus sign for a new particle system. The number of particles that we'll be using is 50,000, so 50, 1, 2, 3, 50,000. The end will set to 100, and the lifetime we can also set to... Let's go with uh, let's go with 100. So the particles will last for 100 frames. They'll start emitting at frame one, end at frame 100, and they'll last for 100 frames. Next, let's open up the render settings, and under here, render as we're going to be setting this to object. The instant object will go icosphere 001, and that is the icosphere on the particle collection. So now if we were to play this, we can see all of these particles are coming out of this emitter and falling straight down. Now currently they're pretty big, so what I'll do is I'll set the scale a little bit lower, then the random scale I'll bring up as well. Something like that. Uh, we'll mess around with the size in a little bit, but we'll leave it at 0 0.03 for now. Next, open up the field weights and turn off gravity. So now if we turn off gravity, restart the animation, and play this, you'll notice all of the particles are now spreading outwards. That's looking pretty cool so far. Next, I'm going to press Shift-A, go to Force Field, down at the bottom, and Turbulence. Uh, also, I'll scale this down a little bit more. I think probably around there is good. Now let's right-click on our Force Field. Go over to the Physics Settings. The strength of this will set to 13, and the flow, we will set this to 4. The flow option, basically what that does is it just sets a path for all of the particles to flow into. So if this was off, they would all go in like a random direction, but with the flow set on, they'll kind of follow each other. And you'll see what I mean if I play this. You can see these ones are kind of going this way. If I set this to 0, and let's play this again. You can see they're just going everywhere. So with this set to four, they'll kind of follow each other and make it a little bit more uniform. Something like that. And that looks pretty cool actually. Next, I'm going to right click on our particle system again. I think the size is just a little bit too big. So I'll go 0 0.02. There we go. Not too bad at all. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's select our icosphere over here and open up a new window. So open up this window and we'll give this icosphere, which is all of the particles, a material. So press Shift F3, 
uh, Shift F3 right here and go new. So now we have a new material. With this material, I'm going to delete this principled shader, press Shift A, go to shader, and then emission shader. Take the emission output, plug it into the surface. Next, I'm gonna press Shift A, go to input, and then particle info node right here. We'll move this over to the side. Next, press Shift A, go to Converter and Color Ramp. So basically what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to set a certain color for the particles that were just emitted and the end of the particles, the ones way out here, they're gonna be a different color. So the longer they last, they'll, the color will go from this side all the way to this side. And we'll control that with the Color Ramp. Uh, before this works though, we need to add one more node. So press Shift A, go to Converter Math node. Take the age output and plug it into the top and then the lifetime and plug it into the bottom input and then set this to divide. Then take the value and plug it into the color ramp, then the color into the emission and set the strength to like, let's say 10. All right, so now that we've done that, let's press Z and go into rendered view. And I think we have to control. Okay, so it's actually this side is where it starts and then the white is where it ends. So for the start nut color, I'm going to set it to maybe like a, let's go blue somewhere around here. And then the end, I'm going to set this color to like a pink, red, somewhere around there, I think will look pretty cool. Also, I wanna make sure the world is set to black, so go over to the world settings and turn this all the way to black. Also, we can delete the light, so come up here and select the light, then hit the delete key and that will get rid of it. All right, looking good so far. Uh, I might want to go a little less saturated on this color, somewhere like that I think will be good. There we go. You can also play around with the strength. If you want it to look more bright, you can turn that up. I might grab this blue color, lighten it up a little bit, and make it less saturated. Uh, actually, let's bring it up. You can do whatever colors you want right here. Some combinations can look really cool. For example, if I go to green, you can kind of see it gives that effect. Yellow uh, gives that sort of look. I think it looks pretty cool. But I, for now, I'm going to leave it at like the pink, somewhere around there. And then also, you can set this from linear to ease, and that will just kind of give it a better transition from this blue color uh, over to the pink. So with these handles, you can control when it starts. So if I want there to be just a tiny bit of blue, I can drag this over here, and you can see it kind of closes in that gap. Or if I want more, I can drag it out this way, and it's a cleaner transition. Also, another thing that I want to do is the end of the particles, the ones that are way out here, I want them to become transparent and disappear. So to do that, I'm gonna press Shift A, go to Shader, and then Prince uh, Mix Shader right here, plug that in, then press Shift A, go to Transparent, and then plug it into the bottom input of the Mix Shader. Next, right click on this math node, press Shift D, and duplicate it. Take this value, plug it into the top, and set this to multiply. Next, take the value and plug it into the mix shader. So now we can control how this works with this multiply value right here. If I bring this up, you can see that the it closes in on that gap, and we can kind of find a nice part, probably a little bit more, probably around like a 2.4 or 5. Uh, that's too much, let's go 2.2. There we go, so you can kind of see the ones that are out here are a little bit more transparent, and they kind of disappear, and I think that looks pretty cool. All right, so I think this material is done. You can mess with the color if you want to. Uh, I think I'll grab this pink color, make it a little bit more red, something like this. There we go, that's starting to come up together a little bit more. All right, I'll leave it there for now. And I'll close this off. We're done with the material. Uh, another thing that I want to do with the particle system 
is I'm going to get rid of this emitter. So I don't want to be able to see that. So over in the render settings, turn off emitter. And once we do a render, that sphere in the middle will be gone. All right, let's go back into solid view. We'll play this and we'll find a nice frame to pause somewhere around there. And then we'll render this, see how it looks. We'll toggle overlays. Not too bad. Okay, so now let's find a good position for the camera. So I'll just kind of find a nice angle, maybe like right here, and I'll hit Control Alt Zero to snap my camera into place. Then I'll right click on the edge, rotate it a little bit, kind of place it somewhere around here. Something like, like this. Double tap R to move it around. And just find a nice angle. Maybe drag it back. The next thing I'm going to do is place a focal point. So with the camera selected, go over to the camera settings, turn on depth of field, and select this sphere right here. So just select that icosphere, and we can see it's now focused on that. Change the aperture to f-stop, and then the value, we'll try 0.4 for starters. We'll see how that looks. Go into rendered view. You can see it's working. These particles over here look really blurry. These ones in the middle look pretty good, and they kind of blur out. I think that looks pretty cool. Let's try a little bit more. Let's go 0.3. And there we go. We can see it's really coming together. I might drag the camera up a little bit and rotate it like this, and go into rendered view again. You can also press the N key and go lock camera to view in the view section and then maybe rotate this around and you can find an easier uh, you can find an angle easier instead of trying to move the camera manually so I might kinda just move it around like this till I find something kinda cool something like that I think will look good then I'll press N to close that off and I'll turn it off as well so now that we've done that I think we are good to go now I wanted to mention you can do this in Eevee if you wanted to but I, for some reason I could not get the, the, the color ramp. If I go over back to the material, uh, let's select this icosphere. Where is the material? Right here. For some reason this part would not work. I could only get a single color and I don't know why that is. Uh, but in Eevee it just it wouldn't let me control the color of it. It would only be a solid color. So if you want a solid color and you're fine with that you can use Eevee. But if you want that gradient look, uh, I could only figure out how to do it in cycles. So now that that's done, let's do a quick render. I'm going to go over to the render settings. I'll open up the sampling and set the render. Let's go with 500 because I want to make sure these particles down here, they render really nicely and there's no noise. And I'll use my GPU and everything else is good to go. So I'll save my project. I'll type in tutorial. All right, now that you've done that, go over to Render and click on Render Animation. Okay, the render has finished. It only took about a minute. So now that this is done, let's go over to the compositor and give this some nice glow effects. So I'm gonna close this off, go over to Compositing, Use Nodes, and Backdrop is turned on. I'll press N to close off that panel, and then I'll drag this down so we can have a little bit more room. I'm going to hit Control shift left click on this render layer to bring in a viewer node and I'll press V a couple times to bring it into the view. So the first thing I want to add is the glow, so press shift A, go to filter and then glare. I'll place that right here and I'll take the glare, plug it into the composite and I'll set this to fog glow and you can see it gives it a cool effect. Let's set the mix to 1 and we can see where this glare is actually uh, applying it. So this threshold controls the amount. I might drag this down a little bit to give it more glow, a little bit more somewhere around there. Once you're happy with it, you can set this back to zero and you can see what that does. I'm going to control left click this and control left click this and you can see the differences. It just gives it a nice glow effect. I think it looks pretty cool. The next thing I want to do is a color and then color correction, uh, no not color correction, color balance, place this right here, place it in the viewer node, the image into the image, 
and I'm gonna brighten up the highlights. So over here is the gain, this is the highlights. I'll drag the lightness up a little bit and that will just give the overall brightness a little bit more. There we go, you can see its effect. What happens if we darken the shadows a little bit? Yeah, I don't really like that, I'm gonna control Z. You can also give it a nice blue midtone color, something like that, maybe down here. All right, that looks pretty cool. And the last thing you can do if your image is just a little bit too dark is add in a gamma node and turn this to maybe like 0.9, something like that, and it will just brighten up the whole image. So there you go guys, that is how you create an abstract image using particles in Blender 2.8. If you create something cool, I would love to see it, so make sure you go uh, follow me on Instagram, I'll show it right here. This right here, uh, it's at Blender Made Easy, and you can see some of the stuff that I've done already. So there you go guys, that is going to be it for this tutorial. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, goodbye.